Good morning, this is Ray Williams and this is October 2010. This is my uh, Vickers FB5. I'm going to show you the layout. The wings are put on with uh, with wing tubes that uh, passing through near the spar areas. Of course, the flying wires are attached. Being a four interplane strut, we're able to keep the assembly pretty much together. I use the data file from Winsock. This is the one by Brian Knight, his picture in the front. The landing gear that I use was the center and not the ski. The center of the fuselage is uh, pretty busy. Let's see, this is the this is the rudder over there. Red arms underneath here. And show in here. Where the pilot's foots were. And the elevator horns. Of course, on the side where the stick is. I have two a pilot and a gunner. Uh, they're from Alan Hawes, Great Britain. And this is the, the Lewis uh, Mark I machine gun, which they used in the very beginning of the war. Uh, this particular one was, of course, it was the infantry version. Later on, they abandoned the cooling tube. We have a shell catching bag. Uh, this gun took about a year to make. It's had a replaceable drum on top for 96 shells. And uh, the idea was it didn't have a synchronized gun with a propeller, so this is what they had to do. They had to uh, put the gunner out in front so he, he could sweep. I guess he could also stand up and shoot behind. So they show in pictures. Uh, the fuel tank is behind the pilot. I put mine up in the wing, get some more more flow. Let's see, let me show you down here. I had to bring the pulsers. This is a twin piston oil pump. So the two pulsers, I brought them outside so we could see them. The heart of the project is the gnome engine. This happens to be a 160 version with three cams. Though they did use the 100 horse. Uh, I have four speeds electronically uh, programmed. Uh, the 100 only had the one speed either on or off. Uh, high speed is determined by prop load only. Uh, this engine does not have a carburetor. Never did. It relied only on it cutting the number of cylinders. Uh, the spark to the cylinders from the magneto. On high speed, it took two revolutions to fire all the cylinders. The next speed was four revolutions, then eight, then 16 revolutions. On the third speed, you're only talking, talking maybe one firing per revolution, four speed, one firing every two revolutions, which is pretty remarkable. This is a monosop. It has only one valve in the in the head, one push rod. It receives its, its uh, fuel through uh, holes uh, in a port when the piston's at the low end. It's really bringing in raw fuel. The engine uh, in the cycle sucks in uh, 
it's air through the exhaust valve. Uh, there's, even though it's a hollow crankshaft, uh, there's very little vacuum on the on the on the crankshaft. The uh, spark wires are bare. These spark plugs are from Napco. Little quarter thirty-two. Uh, this is this is his V3 plugs. The bare wires go down to a distributor, which of course rotates with the engine. And there's a fixed brush up here near the top. Is a brush. This gear here happens to be a timing gear for the ignition. On the opposite side is a gear also for the oil pump. This engine turns on high speed about 2800 RPM, uh, second speed 24, and about 1600 and about uh, 1000 on the fourth speed. Fourth speed really is only used for coming in and windmilling because it doesn't really keep running that well on fourth. Uh, the compression is going against you, so the when you're landing, the windmilling is supposed to help you uh, keep the propeller turning, and that's how they they've, they work between uh, the third and fourth speed, and of course, whipping it off. This propeller is a 35-35 pusher, and I have it made by Tennessee Propellers, and he does a nice job. He just uh, notice it's blunt on the end. Uh, I only have two inches of ground clearance when this is assembled. Other than that, the, the heart, like I said, the heart of the project is the Gnome 160. I chose a pusher so that uh, people could see the whole engine spinning and running. Let's see, the wing sections. They weigh eight pounds a piece. Uh, the tail, this is another big project, took me three tries to make it light enough. It's six pounds total, carbon fiber uh, tubes. And all my stringing, let's see what's showing here. Let me see if I can show. Yeah. All the stringing has turnbuckles, which I had to make. Uh, they have a forked end and then an eye end. The eye end uh, was uh, sewn for uh, vinyl coated Kevlar. It's a pretty strong uh, flying wire. And so there's about 75 turnbuckles on this airplane. Uh, assembled. It takes 25 uh, each time we assemble this. And of course, there's turnbuckles on the cables coming back to the rudder, and of course, each half each half of the elevator goes straight up through to the wing outside of the uh, the A-frame. The tail skid is uh, is just a floating tail skid. There's no steering from it. Tip this over.